All right, so. Good afternoon, Horizon Baptist teenagers. I hope you're doing well. If there's anything you need right now or anything specific that you need prayer about during this time, feel free to reach out to me or my wife during this time. We'd love to chat with you. We'd love to see how you guys are doing. So please feel free to give us a call or text me or my wife. We'd love, love, love to pray for you and do anything that you need. So over the last couple of weeks, we have started a series known as Blessings of the Gospel in the Christian Life. Blessings of the Gospel in the Christian Life. And this is just a series for the time being while we're not meeting together. And it's just going over how we as Christians have to apply the gospel just as much in our lives, just like an unsaved person needs to as well. See, before we were saved, we needed to trust Jesus to take us to heaven. And now we have to apply the gospel every single day as a Christian in our relationship with God and in how we see ourselves before God. And last week we talked about how the blood of Jesus Christ offers us forgiveness for any sin that we do. That no sin is too big. You haven't failed too many times for God not to forgive you. God loves you so much, and he wants to offer you cleansing and a removal of guilt by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we said, and 1 John 1, 9 really clearly states it, confess, he, if, you, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's an amazing fact of the gospel. But now this week, we're going to be talking about not only our forgiveness in the gospel of Christ, we're going to talk about our freedom in the gospel of Christ. Look with me in Romans chapter 6, and we're going to start reading in verse number 1. It says this, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Basically what he's saying, just because we receive forgiveness and grace for our sin does not mean that we use forgiveness to get out, like a get out of jail free card. We don't ask for forgiveness just to keep on sinning. We get forgiveness so that we can keep moving on for Christ. Look with me in verse number two. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Now, that word baptism in this chapter doesn't refer to water baptism like we did this Sunday. This refers to simply being immersed or completely placed into something. And what he's saying is that we have been put completely into Christ. Before you were saved, before you trusted Christ, before you had uh, placed your faith in him to take you to heaven, you were what is called dead in sins. You were completely in sin, unable to set yourself free, unable to get out of it. And when you trusted Christ, you were taken from a position of in sin to in Jesus Christ. Your new identity, your new nature is no longer sin. It is Jesus Christ. And by consequence, by the reason, because you are in Jesus, you are now in his death, burial, and resurrection. And this week we're going to see how the death of Jesus Christ applies to our lives today. And what it means that we're in the death of Jesus. Look with me in verse number 5 of Romans chapter 6. It says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. The gospel clearly teaches us in our lives that we are completely set free from sin because of the cross of Jesus Christ. Because of our new identity in Jesus, because of who Jesus Christ has created us to be in his crucifixion, we are no longer under the power of sin. The cross of Jesus Christ has now given us the ability to not sin. And sometimes in our Christian walk, Satan loves to come along and lie to us and say that we are still underneath sin. 
that we're never going to be completely free from sin. Oftentimes in our lives, we struggle with different things, whether that's looking at bad things on our computer or whether we lie or cheat on a test or whether we're gossiping about people. It's easy sometimes to just continuously fail in the Christian life and act like we're still dead in sin and act like sin has control over us. But because Jesus Christ put you in himself, you are now in his death. And the Bible is very clear that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Because of who you are in the cross of Jesus Christ, you don't have to obey sin. You're free. You are no longer under the slave master sin. You are under Jesus Christ. And because you are in Jesus Christ, you don't have to obey the lust of the flesh. Now, you are still going to sin. You're still going to do what's wrong. You're still going to fail because you're a finite human being. But that does not mean you shouldn't be actively working to obey Christ. For instance, me as a husband, I have to continuously work at being a better husband. I have to continuously work at loving my wife and helping her and serving her. But just because I fail to do that as a husband doesn't mean I completely go off the rails and do whatever I want. No, I need to continuously progress and be a better husband more and more. And it's the same truth with the gospel. You're still going to fail, but your job is to not be perfect your job is to be progressing and to make and to believe who you are in Jesus Christ and act more and more like who you are in Jesus Christ. Look with me at verse number 11 of chapter 6 here. It says, Likewise, because of who you are in Jesus, reckon ye also yourselves, or believe. That word reckon just means believe. Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should fulfill it in the lust thereof. The Bible is very clear that we now as believers are set free from sin because of the cross. Therefore, whenever we're tempted, whenever we are tempted to do what's wrong, whenever Satan comes along and tempts us with that thing that we really struggle with, we need to remember who we are, which is free from sin in Jesus Christ. That remember that the old man, that man that wanted to continue sailing and continue doing what's wrong and continue to serve the master sin, that person was put to death. And now in Jesus Christ, you're free from that sin. But not only do you need to believe that, you need to act on it. Because you can believe something without acting on it. You can believe in Jesus without serving him. And because of that, you can believe that you're free from sin and still act like you're caught up and under the slave master sin. So whenever sin tempts you, believe who you are in Jesus, but also act on it. Say no to sin. Disobey that slave master. Don't obey the lusts of the flesh. Run away. Act like you're free. Act like you are completely free by the cross of Jesus Christ. Guys, if you're tempted to look at something on your computer, say no, remember who you are in Jesus, that you're free from that sin, and slam your computer and run away. Girls, if you're ever tempted to gossip about something, remember that Jesus Christ has set you free from that and shut your mouth. Don't say anything. Don't talk. Run away from the conversation. I'm not saying only girls gossip. This is the only example I could come to my brain. But I'm just saying, whatever tempts you, whatever you are tempted to do in, the, in, in your life that you know is wrong, remember you're free in Jesus Christ because of his cross, because of his death, and act on it. Say no and run away from sin and act like you're free because you are. You are free in the gospel, so act like it. I hope you guys learned something from this, and I hope you guys are benefited from this. But if you guys need anything at all, please feel free to reach out to me or my wife. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week and a good weekend. Have a good night. Bye-bye.